Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. Tonight we are checking in a copy of one of the best rated war games in the entire world, War of the Ring. This is the second edition from Ares Games. I am Mo Tuzano of the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is what's in the box? I got a copy of War of the Ring here. I've had it for far too long. It's been on my pile of shame too long. Uh, my podcast co-host, Sean, just talked up this game a whole bunch on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on podcatchers all over the place. When we were talking about board game alternatives to getting into a hobby miniature war game, like a big war game where you got to buy lots of miniatures and paint them and assemble them, this came up with a very strong recommendation as a replacement to one of those well, yes, this game does have miniatures. There's no painting. There's no assembly required. And this is literally rated the number two war game in the world right now, with number one being Twilight Imperium, which personally, I don't even consider much of a war game. So this could be considered the best war game ever made. So we're going to take a look at War of the Rings. Again, I am I'm Otuzno with the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find my content at tabletopbellhop.com. I'm going to dive right into this. First off, I'm just going to cut the shrink off. So I'm going to adjust the angle here so I can get this. Just using a cheap hobby knife to get this started. So, all about the hills, the hosts of Mordor Rage, the captains of the west, were found, foundering in a gathering sea. The sun gleamed red, and under the wings of the Nazgul, the shadow of death fell dark upon the earth. The War of the Ring has begun. The War of the Ring is a grand strategy board game that allows its players to immerse themselves in the world of J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and experience its epic action, drama, conflict, and memorable characters. As the free people player, you command the proud hosts of the most important kingdoms of the Third Age. From the Horse Lords of Rohan to the Soldiers of Gondor and the Elven Lords of Rivendell, you lead the defense of the last free realms of Middle-earth. Face the evil minions of Sauron on the field of battle in a desperate attempt to delay their onslaught while you lead the Fellowship of the Ring in the quest for Mount Doom. As the Shadow Player, you lead the hosts of the Dark Lord and his most powerful minions as they try to bring darkness to Middle-earth. Legions of orcs, trolls, wolf riders, and the dreaded ring race await your command. Hunt the ring bearer and bring the precious ring to his master or crush your enemies with your unstoppable armies. This is your chance to forge the destiny of an age. You can see the back of the box here, and we'll put this down and take a look at what you get inside. Alrighty, right on top, we've got the rules and some punch boards. We'll flip through the rules right away. Oh, we have a player aid underneath, so we'll take a look at these rules first. I am going to just flip to the end, just so I can tell you ahead of time. Big bonus right here, last page in index. Love it. Every game, especially this thick, should have an index. We are looking at 46 pages. Not terrible. A little shorter than, say, Gloomhaven, but not by much. Of course, some of those pages are going to be things like this. It's just art. Uh, we got a nice summary on the edge. There's some notes that this is the second edition. Uh, list of the game components. Looks like this is a pretty sparse pages so far. A lot more, yeah, a lot more. So we're still not needing to rules. So we're cutting down the amount of complexity. But man, look at all those miniatures, right? So I said, a miniature game without the army collecting? Well, the army's all in the box. Now, there is a deluxe edition of this that costs a fortune that comes with pre-painted minis. That would be impressive to see. That I do not have. Uh, we're looking at the sort of the board. Now we're starting to see a lot more text. So once we get into the rules, it's a little chunk here, here. See tons of examples, which is good. Lots of shots of actual stuff from the game. It's always nice to see. Uh, this is a war game, so you have all your terrain types and your different types of borders. No hexes in this one. Another shot of the board. Uh, still quite a bit of artwork. So I'm going to guess that probably about half of this is going to be actual rules. Setting up the game, and again, how to set up. So another big two-page spread of the map. This is not going to be a light one. This is a... a Heavier war game. Not for the faint of heart. From what I understand, it is best with two players, but can be played with more. All right, there is a lot of text here. They've given up on fluff, and they're just like, all right, you're going to be playing the game. Here, Here is all your stuff. Um, 
Thankfully, we're not looking at a war game like section 3.6.8, but this one definitely has got a lot going on. Catapults and sieges. Great Gandalf picture there. People of Middle Earth, the different characters. Fellowship of the Ring. Lots and lots of rules. And it looks like right to the end, we're still going more rules. So the burden of the ring. And then multiplayer rules. So you can play four players, it looks like. And winning the game. So you, we are going all the way to page 44 with rules. There was some art at the back, but you're looking at a good 40 pages of rules to learn War of the Ring. That's going to be a nice coffee shop afternoon for me sitting and reading this. Then we get to a player aid, and just to prove that this is not a light game, the player aid has more text on it than I've seen in some rule books. It is also two-sided with an action die reference chart. Being a two-player game, it does have two of these, which is always nice to see. I always appreciate that. Thank you, Aries Games, for including two. So if you do play four players, you're going to be short. Uh, we have a punch board. Very muted colors. Definitely doesn't pop like some modern games. Two-sided. Then we have the game board. We'll see how well I can get this in camera because I think this is going to be a big one. Oh, uh, not that bad. We can just... Oh, that's why, because this is only half of it. <laughs> that's, that makes a little more sense. So we have half of the War of the Ring board here. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a big board. We can almost get it all into the camera here. A um, whole bunch of spots on the edge with action spots. I do apologize for the glare in this one corner where some cards are going to be. Um, the Elven Ruins. You can kind of see some of the features on the map here, especially over here. A lot of empty spots. You got the Shire here. Anyone who knows Lord of the Rings is probably going to recognize this map. I'm not sure what the different colors are, but it's probably where the factions start. So I'm going to fold this in half so we can hold this up a little closer so you can kind of see how the zones are color-coded. Very clear map. Um, text is a little hard to read from here. Like, I'm not sitting that far away. I can't read what this says. This one says Arnor. They did white over the dark background with a black lining. That's a little tough to see. I don't know how often you need to know the names of stuff. Of course, if you're a real fan, you've memorized the map of Middle Earth, and you're all good. That is not me. So we have the other half of the board. <laughs> oh, I've got it upside down. The other half of the board, this is a, a significantly large board, to be honest. This is, this is a big game. It's going to take up a lot of room. You can kind of see, I'll scroll down here, you can see the other half. You've got a few trackers here. You've got a tracker along the top. You've got some kind of progression down the side, another spot to put cards on. Very solid looking board. I don't know what these symbols are, but this looks like it's Mount Doom. Yeah, that is, that is... Mount Doom, so this has got to be something with tossing the ring in. I have to assume that's one of the victory conditions for the good guys. Nice thick mounted board, um, nothing on the back, worth noting. Ooh, we got some thick cards. Well, thick's not the right word, tall cards, tarot sized cards. Alright, what do we want to look at first? So, let's start with some of the miniatures here. So once I open these, these are not going back in the bags, these are not resealable. We're going to slide this back. We're going to pull out some minis and see what we can get different factions here. So what I will show off is the box insert, which is, seems decent enough for what you get here without knowing the game. It works. It's not the most beautiful box insert, but it looks good to me. So we have some kind of archers. I probably won't get all of them. We have mounted archers. Nice minis. Like, uh, they, they're the, the slightly bendy. Like, as you can tell, I can bend this sword without breaking it. We have another archer who's just standing there. Okay, that one we've definitely seen. Uh, there are mounted people with spears. Minis actually have a surprising amount of detail. We have spearmen. To be honest, knowing if I get all of these is going to be a little rough. We're going to see what I can do here. Awesome that might be all of the types. That's all I'm seeing quickly. No, that's a different type of spearman. 
Don't know if it matters. That's the same horse archer. Spear, horse, horse, spear. So it looks like you might have melee and ranged combat mount, both mounted or not. Yeah, that's the same one. With, yeah, two different types of each unit type. So two different types of archers, two different types of spearmen. I'm not spotting any others. Oh, this is definitely different. It's a spearman with the spear pointed straight up. So you can see the, the bendy miniatures. Uh, some people aren't going to be happy about that. I have heard a trick that if you put these in very hot water, they get a little, they'll straighten up and then you put them into ice water. It fixes them. I don't know if that's true. Don't go off my word on it. To try that. Uh, but it might work. Personally, I don't care. I'm not, I don't need painted, perfectly painted miniatures when I'm playing. So I do apologize if there are other unit types in here. Well, there's definitely one. I found a dwarf. All right, now I'm curious. So there are just a bunch of minis here, all in this light blue color. I see another dwarf here. So yeah, there's definitely a few different unit types here I may have missed. Then we're gonna get into the white characters here. Which have banners. Really nice looking minis for something this small. I am impressed. So I don't know if these are your leaders or what, but these all have pennants or banners. Uh, that is different. That is a different banner. They remind me a bit of the uh, miniatures in Battle Lore. You've got uh, Nazgul on a dark one here. So these gray ones are definitely units from both types, both sides, both factions. Again, you got some of these bent poles, but nothing's damaged, right? That's the good thing about this type of plastic. Nothing's broken. That's actually the same type of pendant as that. And then we have mounted, it looks like a Nazgul, Dark Rider. All right, you get the idea from what's there. We're gonna toss these in and move over to the red faction, the red side. This is the other reason I don't worry about the bending. I feel no guilt at just tossing these back in here. I'm not worried anything's gonna break. Huh. We just found a little standalone miniature. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, so again, we have archers, but these are looking like we got the forces of darkness now. Yeah, that's definitely some kind of nasty orc or urukai, spiky armor and such. Uh, another type of orc or goblin. You got some big looking, possibly ogres. You got war elephants. Lots of different unit types over here. Uh, spearmen. Definitely the, uh, oh no, that's the same archer? That's the same archer. That's pretty much the same. Again, I'm gonna flip through these quick, see if I see any other sculpts. More elephants. More elephants. Oh, there's something different. Wolf rider. Got goblin wolf riders. Not spotting anything else quickly here. But again, there may be another type of unit or two in here. Very cool minis, very impressed. So there we have some of the, the evil factions armies. Then in this little bag, we have a Smeagol. We have Gollum. So it looks like the heroes and name characters are kind of silver. That is a really cool looking Gollum mini. Hopefully the camera will zoom in a bit on him. Come on, focus. Focus, camera, focus. Don't focus on War of the Ring, focus on Golem. Uh, you can at least kind of tell the shape there. I do apologize, my camera's not focusing in on him very well. So we have Golem, and then we have a bunch more of the name characters here in silver. I'm not going to try to guess who's who here. Just in case I get it wrong and offend a fan. Well, okay, that's Gandalf. That one's pretty obvious. Then we got one of the halflings, one of the hobbits. 
We got, I would guess, Elrond. I said I wasn't going to guess, but I'm guessing. Uh, someone on a horse could be the King of Gondor. I'm not sure what that's going towards. Gimli would be my guess. I said I wasn't going to guess, and here I go. See that one? I have no idea. That could be a few different characters. This, I would assume, are Merry and Pippin since they're together, but it might be Frodo and uh, Sam. My guess would be... Oh, it might be. One of them's just carrying a backpack, so that could be Sam and Frodo. Why? Oh, one of the other wizards, I'm guessing? Maybe Radagast? Maybe Soroman? And yet another... That looks more like a Soroman, to be honest. This looks like we may have three or four of the wizards. All right, named characters. All right, what else we got in here? We got some funky dice. Funky dice are always cool. We're gonna toss these in with the reds because they'll be easy to pick out. We have standard D6s with great big one pips. I don't know why the one pips so big, but they remind me of the dice we used to get in grab bags when I was a kid. Giant ones. Bunch of D6s, five of them. Then some unique red dice. Let's see if we can get those. So much plastic. My floor is in terrible shape. We got some kind of dagger. Uh, possibly a palantir. Crystal ball. We have the lidless eye. And I have no idea. Possibly a torch or a banner. What have I missed? We got the dagger. Then we have, uh, that might be a ring wraith head. So we have a bunch of those. Oh, some of these have two symbols on them. I don't know how I missed that. Or these aren't all the same. Is that possible? Oh no, they all have two symbols. I just missed the one side. So bad guy dice. Good guy dice. With different sides, which is interesting. So maybe they aren't bad and good guy dice. That was my guess. So we have a crest. We have a sword. We have another sword. We have a palantir or crystal ball. Then we have a banner with a crest or something or a rune. And then we have an elven rune. Nice looking dice. Plastic. They got a nice feel to them. We got cards, and then we have two separate decks. Looks like. Take a look at those. It's one stack. Two stacks. So, all the same backs all the way through? No, nope, not quite. All right, those are obviously the same backs as these. So there's a few more cards in the blue stack. Then we have all kinds of text on each of these. So this one says, Shellob's Lair. The Shellob's Lair special hunt is now in play. Add this tile to the hunt pool when the Fellowship is on the Mordor track. And then the bottom says, one for the Dark Lord. Play if the defending army is in the same region as the Fellowship. Add one to dice. So it looks like... These are a mix of events and cards you have in your hand. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of artwork for a Middle Earth game. I'm a little surprised, but there is a lot of text on each of these cards. They don't they don't seem to do simple things. It seems like a fairly complex what each card does. And there are a ton of these. So we have a whole bunch of Red Player, Sauron, Forces of Darkness cards, all with the same backs. And then I expect these to look about the same. Oh, these are different. They, they play differently, obviously. So it says, Gimli, son of glowing, captain of the west. If one of Gimli is in battle, add one to the combat strength of and dwarf of Erebor. So are these all... Okay, so we have a mix here. So some of these are character cards? Yeah, okay. So they aren't all the same. I didn't notice the symbol in the middle changes. So 
Or are these all the same? Yeah, no, they're not. Okay. So we have a couple different things here. This makes more sense. So we had two different ones. So what I was showing you earlier had the banners on the back. Those have the two part. There are also these sword ones. And I, they also have two parts. So I don't know what the difference is here. So there are two different sets of cards here. Durin's Bay, the Balrond of Moria, Words of Power. Yeah, I'm not sure what the difference is. But then also going through these, we have those, we have some swords, but then we also have whatever these are that all have pictures. So yeah. So we have two different decks here and they, oh, my bad. Two different decks with the two part cards. So again, events and then some kind of you can spend the cards. For the blue side, and then same thing with these. Yeah, more two part cards for the blue side. Again, not a lot of artwork to show here, so nothing really to show off. But then what we also have are character cards. So you have the artwork on the one side and then the rules for that character on the other. Dig the aesthetic, oh, upside down. Art's nice. So we do have Soramon. There's your Aragorn. Interesting that you actually have Gandalf the White and Gandalf the Grey. So that's good to know. Boromir, yep. And Gimli. Alrighty. So that is everything you get with War of the Ring. Not a lot of cardboard in this. It's almost all minis. Uh, just the one punch board, which is a little surprising. Quite the hefty rule book, though. Looks like uh, quite the game to learn. It's going to be on my reading pile. Next time I'm out. Huge, massive board. Two parts. This time's eight. That is a, a big game. That is going to take up a lot of my table. I've got a big enough table for it, but people may have a problem with that depending on how much room they have in their game room. Uh, that's it for punch board, just the one punch board. Not a, lot of, not a lot of tokens and stuff, and it looks like a lot of these just go out on the map to mark that something's going on in an area. Excellent looking player aids. Love to see that two-sided to explain what the different dice symbols do. And a nice 44 page rule book. Looks good, Aries Games, I'm impressed. Minis are nice. Yeah, there's a few bent, but that's what you expect with those little rubbery minis. I gotta say, rubbery minis are better than plastic minis that break in the box. I would much rather have this style of miniature than a Games Workshop style or plastic that I can't just toss back in the box like that, that I now have to put on a shelf and try to uh, keep safe in between games. So, so there is a look at what you get in War of the Ring from Ares Games um, from the UK. So you can get that imported over here. Uh, this one's available everywhere. This is literally the, the second highest rated war game on Board Game Geek right now beat only by Twilight Struggle. So this is the only folk on a map style game because Twilight Struggle is much more of a card driven uh, area control game. I gotta say it looks impressive. What, what you get in this box looks really good. Ton of miniatures. If you are looking for some miniatures for your D&D &D game, but they're a smaller scale. But if you just want a bunch of minis, this might be a way to go. Uh, I don't know the price point on this off the top of my head though. So that's it. Um, again, I am Mo Tuzano of the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop one word. Uh, whether that's social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, any of that spot uh, here on YouTube or on Twitch, it's all tabletop bellhop, one word. Um, one of the things we do is we answer your gaming and game night questions. That's what I do over at tabletopbellhop.com. We are trying to be a dear Abby for gamers. And if you've got a gaming or game night related question, send it to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. And then we'll answer that question on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which we record live Wednesday nights here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tabletop Bellhop uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern time, uh, standard or daylight, depending on what time of the year it is. So watch for that uh, on Wednesdays and on Tuesday nights. That'll The audio from that gets released as a podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, or whatever um, service you use to get your podcasts. Uh, that's about it for me. One last thing. If you did dig this video, it would be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. 
and consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night and game on. <laughs>